All right, I think we're recording. Well, listeners, I have a uh, special treat for you this evening or whenever you listen or watch the podcast. Um, but we're doing it, uh, I think it's a Wednesday evening. I have Ruben Salesman with uh, Structure Tech Inspections out of, is it Minneapolis, Minnesota? Is that correct, Ruben? You got it, Minneapolis, yep. Awesome, awesome. Well, I am, I, man, I've been a fan of yours for a while. And uh, back at you. <laughs> I may have told you, I actually didn't even know Ruben about a year ago, and I, I can't believe he wasn't on my radar, but uh, once I checked this guy out, man, he's got multiple inspectors. He just runs a, a, a top drawer organization, and uh, I hope he doesn't mind, but I have been using his uh, YouTube um, videos to train my guys because he's got a top-notch YouTube channel. Uh <laughs> And I encourage you guys to check that out, all the listeners. What's what's the name? Is it Structure Tech? Is that the name of the YouTube channel? I don't know. It's I think it's Inspector Ruben is the name. But yeah, if you go on YouTube and you type in Structure Tech, you'll find it. I promise. Awesome, awesome. Well, Ruben, tell us a little bit about you. Um, you know, where did you did you grow up in the area, and how did you become a home inspector and all that stuff? I, I'd love to know that myself. <laughs> Sure. I, uh, I, I grew up in the Twin Cities here. I've lived in Minnesota my whole life. I, I was homeschooled from, you know, up until about fifth grade. And growing up, I, I started doing construction with my dad. He was a carpenter. Okay. I do remodeling and all that from about the age of six on. And anytime he needed a grunt, you know, he needed somebody to do the dirty work, take down right. this wall, carry these shingles up to the roof, whatever. I would take days off of school and I'd go help them on construction projects. Right. And, you know, I'd get paid like five bucks an hour or something. I thought it was great. By the you time didn't I know about laws back then, did you? <laughs> no, no, none yeah. whatsoever. But I, I enjoyed it. I had, a, I had a really fun time. And, you know, I, I learned a lot about houses growing up. My first real job was working at a hardware store and I couldn't believe they were paying me to sit there and cashier like as much as I was getting paid to do construction. I've, right, right, right. I've never had a job that difficult in my life. Right. So, it makes everything else easy by comparison, right? Everything, everything I've ever done since then has been like, how am I getting paid to do this? Yeah. Gotcha. But so I, I grew up doing construction and then the year I graduated high school, my dad bought a home inspection company. He had been doing oh, home okay. inspections on his own for about seven years but he had a tough time getting into it, just doing it full time. It was kind of home inspections and construction. And by the time he bought an inspection company in 97, uh, that's when I started with him. And okay. it was more just kind of, um, I mean, I started full time. I worked myself to a part time position and eventually kind of tapered down to not doing a whole lot for him mm -hmm. until I decided I want to make a go of this. I, I want to be a home inspector. I want to do this. And once I did that, uh, I, I started training with them and got into home inspections myself. That would have been probably, it was uh, 2004. Okay. So yeah. I've been doing home inspections since 2004. So roughly about 13, 14, 14, 14 years. Yeah. Your, right your dad's been at it about 21, I guess, total. That's about right. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Well, cool. Well, you've certainly grown your company, and uh, man, I tell you, I, I watched some of your videos and stuff. You, you seem to be top drawer. I, I love that, and I, I, I want to get into some of the stuff like you advertise. Like, you know, you get on the roof if you can, uh, and if you can't, you'll arrange to have a drone there. I, I think that's right. cool. Huh? That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, when those drones first came out, my idea was I was going to have all my guys do drones, and I was going to use it as a USB, but then, you know, you got to do this 107 and, and, you know, and some of my guys, I mean, I love them all to death, but some of them just aren't quite, <laughs> maybe a lot of drones and trees. There but, are so moving, many moving parts to that. And I mean, pardon the pun, but I mean, everything with that, it's, it's controlling it. What happens if you crash? What about insurance for it? Yeah. What about, about fly zone restrictions within five miles of an airport. There's just, there's so many things. And I, I'm just like you. I thought, all right, how am I going to do this? Am I going to hire a teen? I thought I'm going to hire a teenager. Right. Go do all my drone inspections for me. I'll get them licensed. But I realized how many roofs do I really have where I need it? And eventually yeah. I just said, we'll pay for it. And I was yeah. actually looking over my, my books for the year. And to date for this year, 2018, 
we have paid for four drone inspections. But it's cool. But you've got that USP. I mean, you're certainly willing to do it. I mean, you know, so it, that, that's a very smart. So you pay somebody outside to do that, to come in? Yeah. yeah, I found a drone company who will go out there and take high quality images within 24 hours for us for like nothing, like 75 nice. bucks or something. So Well, and you know what? You could probably be able to find more and more because there's more and more people uh, you know, that do that. I mean, I mean, I even thought about doing it a little bit on the side, but it's, I mean, I hate to use the word commodity, but you know, with all the drones out there and it's actually pretty easy to get a license that might become a little bit of a commodity, which, you know, that's good if you're hiring somebody. So, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, yep. I got a little bit off there, uh, but that's fine. Uh, um, we, Ruben and I were talking in the pre-interview that, you know, this is just like a conversation at a restaurant at a, at a conference or something where I always feel like every, every time I've ever been to a conference, they were all valuable, but that was some of the most valuable stuff. And that's what we're trying to replicate here. So, Absolutely. yeah, or, or Ruben, I'm sorry. I mean, talk here. Um, so tell us, how did you go from just you and your dad to how many, how many inspectors do you have now? How did that happen? And uh, just, just walk us through that. Sure. Um, well, when I, when I first started with my pops, it was me, him, and one other guy. It was just the three of us. Right. And, you know, it had been that way since he bought the company in 97. Okay. And it stayed that way for several years. And eventually, I, I remember it was right about the time that uh, I was about to have my first kid. I started thinking to myself, I don't want to be staying up late writing inspection reports and doing all this. Uh, when I, when I have kids, I, I want to have more of a life. And the, the only way I'm going to really grow this business is to have more people working for me. And I thought, I, I, I want to grow this. And it just kind of something clicked in my head. We're going to grow this business. And that was when we added our first inspector. Actually, it was, it was probably right after my son was born. Um, right when my son, yeah, it was, it was right around that time, probably, uh, 2009, 2010, we added our first inspector onto the team. Okay. And it's been growing ever since. And we're, we're growing faster and faster every day, it feels. Awesome. Um, two, two, two questions I want to back up on that. How many inspectors do you have now? And what was it like hiring that first one? Because I know a lot of the listeners struggle with that. It's very hard. Nobody's going to do it as good as you can. You know, and that, that seems to be where a lot of people – you know, I'm not gonna say they fall down, but they had a lot of struggles as, as did I. <laughs> sure. Sure. It, uh, well, right now we're at, uh, we've got 17 inspectors nice. on the team nice. and we've got one, we got another one who's going to be starting six days from now. He's starting on Tuesday. So it, it'll be 18 in about a week. Um, and as, as far as the first one, that, that would have been Malin 2009. Yeah. It was 2009. Uh, he started out by helping to answer phones and do scheduling for us at the time. I mean, I was the one who was doing all the answering of phones. I'd, I'd schedule inspections in between my first and second inspection. I'd spend a solid hour returning phone calls and then another hour returning phone calls on the drive home. And uh, it's just, all I did was answer the phone. We, I'm sure you remember those days. Oh yeah, It'll burn you out. I mean, you can do it for a while, but at some point, I mean, even when I was, a, you know, I was a one-man operator, I mean, I was doing, you know, three inspections a day, staying up late, writing reports. I was making a lot of money because it was just me and I didn't have a lot of expense. I had a lot of expenses now. But my quality of life was just, I just got to where, you know, I don't care how much money I make. My life sucks. I mean, all I do is yeah. <laughs> get up, go to work, write reports, stay up late, write reports, get up, do it again. And, you know, that, that – my wife and I had that conversation, like something's got to change. I mean, either I got to cut back or we got to hire people or something, but I can't, I can't do this. Forever. I'm yeah. not going to last. Our marriage isn't going to last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's rough. You, you can't, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I compare it to if you've ever driven a straight drive car and you know, when you're, you're winding out in one gear and your RPMs are up real high before you change into another gear, I'm like, you know, I'm redlining and I cannot do that for either. Ever. I either got to slow it back down or I got to change it. <laughs> uh, great analogy. Yep. I mean, I mean, one way or the other. Well, let me ask you, uh, Ruben, if, if you took on somebody today, if somebody interviewed with you, you liked them. And, and, and I know before I ask this, because I deal with the same thing. There's a lot of variables with their experience, but are coming in. But 
somebody comes to you today and you like them, you, you, you think they got potential, how do you get them from, you know, okay, so this is the way I always say it. Well, you know, when you start out with us, you're a fly on the wall. <laughs> and when you get to the end of the training, I'm the fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah. And I always feel like, you know, everybody's uh, journey from you being the fly on the wall to me being the fly on the wall is a little bit different depending on how much you want to put into it and how much you're, but I mean, what does that look like? If you hired somebody today, you like this person, you think they have a future with structure tech, um, how do you get them from them being a fly on the wall to you being a fly on the wall and them being out on their own? What would that look like? Well, yeah. it, it starts out with them attending home inspections. Well, I mean, the, it starts out by me giving them a huge list of reading, a big reading assignment. Um, I've, I've been, I do a blog on my website and I've been blogging once a week for over the last 10 years now. And I've gone through and I've categorized all the blog posts that I feel are good things for new home inspectors to read. This would be good training material. So I assign them that and I assign them a lot of code documents and just all, all this reading material. I give them that ahead of time. Not like they're going to finish that. I don't think anybody's. <laughs> I started to say, do you do it follow up? Because uh, you know, <laughs> it's never happened. But you know, in my own mind, yeah, they're going to read all of it. And <laughs> so I give them that, and then they start going along on inspections with my inspectors. I have one inspector on my team, Tessa. She's in charge of assigning the the schedule to the new inspector. And they go along with everybody on my team. And I, I tell them, when you're, when you're hired, you will be trained by everybody. And once you're on your own, you will be expected to train the people who come up behind you. This is a okay. team effort. So they, they follow along on inspections. They, they get the beats down. And eventually, after maybe two months or so, they start writing the reports. And they start doing some of the talking. Uh, writing the reports, I think that's one of the most challenging things, is getting the report right. Yeah. And it's, it's usually going to be another two to four months of writing reports. And once they start do writing the reports, I, I let them start doing one inspection a day. Most of my inspectors do two a day. Well, I shouldn't say that. No, most of them do one a day. A couple do two a day. <laughs> so that's where I am. I know I talk to some guys. They're like, yeah, my guy's got to do three a day. And I'm like, I'm like, full time for us is two, and I got several that do one. I got several guys that just, that's all they want to do. I mean, and that's yeah. fine. I, I'm fine with that. You know, every one, I hate three. I mean, every once in a while, we'll do three if it's a condo or something, and we'll really push. But you know, I don't know. We got a lot of cross spaces here. Right? That might work some places in all slabs, you know, but you know, yeah. I hijack you there. I assume you pay your inspectors commission. Right. right? Yeah. You pay them for the work they do. It bumps up depending on. You know, different criteria they have to meet, um, that sort of thing. Are you similar? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. So if they want to take two weeks off, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, it's, Fine. You're getting paid for work that you do. Right, right, right. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't get to – Yeah, my problem with this, Ruben, is when, when you get in the conversation, this conversation with some guys. Some guys. Some guys feel like their way is the only way, and I don't feel that way. I feel like there's multiple business models. I mean, you got to do what – what you think works and it's got to fit your personality too. I mean, you know, you, you can't, you know, if you're not a micromanager, you can't run a micromanaging company. However, if you are a micro, I mean, I, I know I use that like a negative thing. I, I, I need to be a little bit more that way. But I'm not. Um, I do have a question though. Do and, and there's not a right or wrong answer on this. Um, do you, some guys do, some guys don't. Do you pay your guys during training or? I do. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, I some guys don't, but. Dumb, but. It is something. Yeah, and, I, and I've and i lost on some guys. I mean, you know, I've got some guys right up to the point they went out on their own and it didn't work out. You know, I mean, it's cost of doing business. Uh, I've had some guys that I thought were going to be fantastic that just didn't pan out for whatever reason. And, and I've had other guys that I was a little unsure about turned out to be great. And I've had guys that I thought were going to be great that turned out great too. So, I mean, it, it's – Yeah. Yeah, you never know. It's it's really tough, and I I wish there was some type of screening question I could do or test I could give at the beginning to weed those people out. Um, boy, if if you can come up with that for me, please share it. I'll pay you a lot of money for that. Well, you know, there's a whole lot of personality tests and things, but I always say 
if I'm taking a personality test to get a job, I know what they want me to say. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, yeah, I work hard. I mean, of course. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know what the context of the test is. So that's, you know, I don't know. That, they have that disc thing on Tony Robbins or something, but, you know, how I be or something. But, yeah, you know, and there are different personality types, you know, I, among, among all my inspectors. You know, I have some that are, kind of more social and some that aren't social at all but man they're good inspectors and there's i mean i'm sure you got 17 you got a, a wide variety i mean I, I honestly feel like all my guys are really good but they have different i don't know character traits just personality traits i would think would you for agree sure. with that? oh for sure i've got the same thing on my team Definitely. Yeah, and sometimes you know i mean scheduling i don't know how you guys do i mean you know i discourage requests i mean i know some guys encourage that me personally and again there's not a right or wrong answer there's just different business models um i discourage it because you know i like i always tell my guys like this okay so why is starbucks so successful because no matter where you walk into a starbucks anywhere in the world you can get the same thing you know um and, and i want there to be some consistency in the product and i want people to so, you know, when somebody asks you, do you have, who's your best inspector? Well, the second you answer that, you're also saying you have a worst inspector. So yeah. I, I don't answer that. I say, you know, I have certain personality types and I'm sure your clients and realtors have certain personality types and I can match you up with the right one. So, you know, I don't know, but what we do is we try to, you know, ideally our guys live all over and I'm sure Minneapolis greater area is a pretty big area and you got guys oh, yeah. that live all over. Ideally, in a perfect world, everybody would have two inspections and their zip code every day. Oh my gosh, that'd in be a perfect so world. <laughs> yeah, but requests screw that all up, don't they? Don't, yes, yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. the problem, you know. The, the the one totally across town was request the guy that's here, and and, and you know what? You, you probably got somebody who lives in their daggone neighborhood, but they requested mm -hmm. somebody else. And you know, it's it's always a. Um, I, I'm sure you, you experience it. It's it's a you know right it's a balancing now, act. It's what? It's a balancing act. Yeah, it, it's always it's like uh, you know how you have like those math problems that have these constraints you have to work with. <laughs> it's a math problem every day, yeah. and it's never perfect. Um, so anyway, what's your thoughts on scheduling? I've, I've talked a lot. I, I've just throw some of the stuff out there i mean we try to give everybody you know some equality you know try to get them near their thing but you know obviously requests have to take precedent over everything so that's why i'm not a fan of requests but i certainly can't stop it. i just don't encourage it how about you oh yeah it's it's the same thing i mean we we will absolutely do requests i don't like it but people get home inspectors that they get accustomed to working with they start to developing a relationship and it's just natural you're gonna have requests you got to try to accommodate it but i mean my office when somebody's got to drive more than about 45 minutes my office will just say they don't go that far i mean if i get requested to go down to the southern end of the twin cities my office will just say reuben doesn't do that right, so, right. well and then, and then you know and also there's even more and for all the listeners out there if you get multiple inspectors this is the kind of stuff you know, there's also like, okay, so they got requested over here. Now that second inspection, we would like it to either be closer to their house or close to that first inspection. But what you don't want is the opposite end of town. And it's just always a big old mess. And then, you know, sometimes your inspectors look at their schedule and they had one, you know, two days ago. Why don't they have that one now? They're upset. And yes. Yeah. I mean, we go through that and I'm like, look, nobody is purposely trying to do you wrong. <laughs> I mean, do you go through that do you have the same stuff oh, oh completely completely and i've i've been the one doing the scheduling so i know how tough it is for my schedulers to do that and you know it just makes my the, the client care coordinator schedulers whatever it makes their day when they can schedule a home inspection in an inspector's neighborhood i mean they will send them a text like i hope you know where you're going this morning because they are so aware of that. They're, they right. know who they're sending people, and they hate sending people across town, but sometimes they just don't have a choice. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and then it's like, you know, that, that one across town is that realtor who really loves that particular inspector. And I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, I try to, I'll tell you one thing I do, and you, you may have figured this out too, is, uh, you know, when you, let's say you're talking to a team, you know, and they want to start using structure tech, and they're like, well, tell me, tell me which inspector. <laughs> so what I should use. And what I always do is I say, well, how about I tell you three? <laughs> yeah. So that way that, you know, I think three, because of one of the guys is on vacation, one of the, it, you know, instead of just requesting one and, and I get it, they will, you know, they, I mean, they got $12,000 commission resting on this. They want to know what they're getting. You know, it's like, I don't know if you've ever gone to a, a new place to get your hair cut. It could be an adventure. <laughs> it's, everybody likes going to the same person because they know what to expect, you know. So the yep. same thing, I get it. I always try to recommend three. I don't know. Do you do anything similar to that? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I, I usually say, where do you do most of your business? And then those three that I recommend just happen to be <laughs> the closest to that area. Right, right. All geographics for me. But having said that, sometimes, you know, we'll look out at the schedule before it goes out. It usually goes out, I guess, what, seven or something like that? Uh, or we try to look at it before and just double check, like, ooh, Nancy. I won't say any last names, but I'm, she's a type personality. She will eat, you know, this guy up for lunch because he's just so, you know, that's a, not, a good, not a good match. We need to switch that around because she will just flatten him. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't have that much involvement in the day to day scheduling, personally. Right. Right. Well, cool. Well, um, uh, Ruben, tell us something a little bit. That, and, and we alluded to it already. I think that's different. Uh, where you guys will arrange for a drone, but tell us something you do a little bit different that you think might benefit the audience. Well, the one that's on my mind right at the moment uh is is doing the uh the 360 images i'm sure you've seen people talk about these on the forums lately yep yep we i've got a few but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, um i just bought the the 360 cameras for every inspector in my company uh, just delivered them to the office yesterday and nice. we're going to take in a 360 image in every room of the interior of the home so we've got basically every surface covered and okay not something that we're necessarily going to put in our inspection reports. We use HomeGage, so we can, we might. I, I meant to ask you that. I use HomeGage too. I meant to ask you that early. I, I, yeah, we, yeah. We, we've had a discussion about can. this, but I'll go ahead and tell I'll let you finish and then I'll, I'll add. <laughs> we had a big discussion about this. Well, we're going to be, and this isn't a benefit to my clients at all. It's just for our own internal use. Uh, so when you say you broke around. something and it wasn't, you didn't break it. <laughs> exactly. Or, uh, you know, there's this mark on the wall. It's like, well, no, I have a complete 360 image of that room. There's a big dresser there when, when we right. were doing the inspection. You know, stuff like that. It's just, it's nice to know. It's, it's going to cut down on the number of interior photos that we take, just documenting stuff that we can't see. Uh, all right. It's all going to recover right away. Another thing we're doing is build facts reports. You familiar? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like those. Yeah, we're, we're uh, delivering those. We did a soft launch on it. We haven't even advertised it to our clients yet, but we've doing, been doing that for a couple of months now where we send the build facts report the day before the home inspection to our client, and it's just, it's free. We include that, and uh, we've got great feedback on that. And then the next one we're working on right now is HomeBinder. We're going to start offering HomeBinder to oh, all of our wow. clients, too. I interviewed uh, that guy. It sounds pretty good. I uh, yeah. Like, have you have you uh, did a, a beta test on it yet or anything, or you just get started with it? We have not rolled it out yet. We're just in kind of the the nitty gritty details of it, just trying to get ISN set up to do it automatically for us. Sure. That's where we're at right now, we haven't finalized it. Well, you're 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 like me, Ruben. I mean, I always want to have something new to talk about because <laughs> I, I do a lot of realtor presentations, and I'm like. I need something new for this new season, you know, like, what are we going to do? But I do want to back up on the 360 for a minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like them, and we use uh, cameras for the protection because, you know, people are crazy. Man. You know, 10 years ago, they weren't like this, but they have gotten crazy. I mean, people yeah. say you broke something, and yeah, I saw on there the other day that, you know, well, it, actually, that guy really did steal a necklace, it sounds like. Not, you know, that was on the forum there, some guy. I mean, that was horrible. But 
I don't even want to be around. I mean, I've done an inspection and you know, has got his watch collection out there. And I'm like, I, I don't even want to be near this. I mean, I don't want to yeah. you know what I'm saying. Because I mean, I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. But you know, and I know there was one years ago. I mean, I tell my guys, assume that you're on camera all the time. Yes. Uh, some yes. company not, not in our, not in my state, not in your state, but uh, I. I think the guy went and took a whiz out the backyard and somebody took a picture of that and put it on social media. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you talk about the worst thing ever. How you know? is it, right? Yeah. And just assume that you're on camera all the time yes. uh, because you probably will be. Um, but anyway, neither here. And, and you know what I've been guilty about personally, I tell my guys is when I was doing inspections, you know, I'm doing my thing, checking out the kitchen and all. And you know how they have the pictures on the refrigerator? And they'll have, like, pictures of, like, a bunch of people on a golf outing. I'm guilty of looking at it to see if I know anybody. <laughs> I'm like, I think I know that guy. You know, but if you caught me on camera staring at somebody's pictures, that would look bad. But, I mean, honestly, I'm always, when there's a group of people, I'm always looking. Do I know any of those folks? <laughs> guilty. Guilty. Yeah, and, like, you just got to, you know, that could look bad. But, yeah. About the 360 cameras. I think it's great technology. I love it. I think it's fun. Uh, I think for what you're using it for, I think it's fantastic. The, the, the worry I had about putting it into reports, maybe for a reference picture, but my problem with it is if, like, we're taking a picture of something that's wrong, and then that person has that thing spun around or can't find I mean, hell, they can't even find it half the time when I'm taking a picture of it and pointing my finger to it. My worry is that, I would never use that for taking a picture of the defect. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yep. you got to spin that thing around. I mean, it's really neat for all the folks that have never seen one. I mean, you, you, you've probably seen a 180, but 360, you can spin it all the way around, up, down. It's, it's a pretty awesome thing. Uh, and my guys kind of balked on putting it in the reports. I think what you're doing is great, where you're using it just in case for your own protection. It's something, but, you know, you're always worried that, there might be something in the picture that you didn't write up. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, um, a lot of home inspectors had the same concern when we first started putting photos in reports. Yeah, that's true. In, in fact, you know what? There's some old school guys who still try to use that same argument or, or worry. And Preston, you're going to get over this really soon. Yeah, probably so. If it's, if it's a defect that you should have caught, you're going to hear about it either way. Yeah. You know, it's like I do a radio show. Uh, well, two different ones, once a month each. And uh, we went to a live show where people could call in. I was paranoid. I said, one of my competitors is going to call in and he's going <laughs> to ask some crap. Now that this thing goes out, I probably did it. <laughs> he's going to ask some crazy, you know, that nobody would know off the top of their head. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It never happened. And, uh, you know, about every question somebody asks you, it's probably the same question you've been asked a zillion times. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've been in this business long enough. I mean, there's just certain questions you always get asked. And they're the same questions. I mean, you know, so there's, you know, you, you know what you're doing better than anybody else. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when people say I'm nervous about, you know, getting up and speaking. And I'm like, I always, my, always my, my advice always is, what are you speaking about? Home inspection. I'm like, you are the most qualified, knowledgeable person in that room about that subject. You yes. are overqualified to speak for it. Now, if they ask you to speak about brain surgery, yes, you should be nervous. <laughs> if they ask you to speak about how to sell a home, uh, which all those people are good at, you should be nervous. But home inspection, nobody knows more than you about that subject in the room. You should not be nervous. Exactly. Anyway, yep. Well, what advice, Ruben, would you give to somebody uh, starting out in the business today? Um, I would. I would tell them that home inspection skills, no matter how good of a home inspector you are, is not going to get you business. That will not get you started. Agreed. So don't think that there is some market out there for really good home inspectors. I mean, there is, but it ain't going to get you any business. You got to market yourself. So just try to throw that out the window. People get this idea that that's going to get them going. I would say get a good website, spend a good amount of money. Uh, unless you are a web designer, don't design your own website. Don't right. get those cookie cutter templates that all say the same thing. <laughs> um, pay somebody some good money to make it beautiful because that is your storefront. It's a big deal. 
Right. Um, don't don't skimp on it and learn how, either learn how to modify your website and modify it regularly and often or have somebody very close by who can do that for you regularly and often. Don't make it the, be the same person who did your website where it's a big hassle to make changes because hopefully you're going to have a dynamic website and you're going to be changing it often. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I think your advice on that is even better today than it was five, you know, a couple of years ago because you know, I love real estate agents. I get a lot of referrals from them, but I feel like in the near future, people are just going to be buying homes on an app. <laughs> you know, so I think your website and your, uh, your uh, reviews and things like that are going to be much more important. Because there's, the good news is they're still going to need a home inspection. Bad news is your referral sources might not can't come from where they used to come from. <laughs> yes, yes, it's changing. Absolutely. Yep. I want to add one, and I'm sorry I've talked so much. I want to add something else to what you said, um, and, and you're right. You know, being a good home inspector is important. It is important. It is very important to have the technical skills and the chops and, and bone up on it, you know, you know, constantly sharpen that saw, go to all the training but it's not enough. It's not enough by itself. Um, you know, that whole thing about build a better mousetrap and the, the world will build a, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. You got to build a better mousetrap, but you got to build a freeway to your door. <laughs> that's what I say. People got to find it. Opposite though. I do have a problem with some guys. There are some guys out there who think that guys who market are doing something wrong or that they're not good at home inspectors. I, I get into that sometimes and I'm like, you know, it's not mutually exclusive. You can be both. <laughs> you can be a good home inspector and you can be good at marketing. You can be both, but I, I just to further your point, Preston, if you are a multi-inspector company owner and you are not marketing your ass off, you are just plain irresponsible. That's right. You have a responsibility to those inspectors and their families to make sure that they stay busy. It is your job to market or right. have somebody market for you. Right. So. Well, and, that, and you know, that's part of my deal with those guys. I mean, for all the listeners out there, there's nothing wrong with being a single man operation. I, you know, there's some days I wish I was again. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Um, for me personally, like we alluded to earlier in this interview, I got to a point where something had to change and I think you got to that same point. Um, you know, and I either had to scale back or hire people. And, and the problem I saw with being a one-man operation for me personally was I would go out and market, you know, market, 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 and then I would start getting some business. Then I would start doing inspections. But while I was doing inspections, I wasn't marketing. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I was answering the phone, and I was up on the roof, and I was down in crawl space, and I'm trying to tell you. Four, and to me personally, I realized there's three parts to this business. There's the technical skill doing the inspection. There's the marketing part and the administrative part. And it's yeah. very, very hard to do all three. Um, and, and it's hard to be good at all three because you just can't split yourself up. And then you get busy doing one thing, you can't do the other. So that was my deal with my guys. And the way I always thought was, if you could just have a marketing machine working for you 24 hours a day, you know, you know, seven days a week, taking care of that part. You had an administrative part, taking care of all the scheduling, getting that termite letter. You know, there's always stuff there are closing the uh, you know, answering questions, pricing, whatever. Um, and you could just focus on the technical part, but that's what most guys want to do. And, you know, I pay you as much as I possibly can and make sure all those other things are paid for. That's our deal. And, and, you know, and, and, and basically I created, and I sounds like you do the same thing. I created a place where I wanted to work. <laughs> if, 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 if this place existed, I, that I was, I would be working for it because that would be the deal that I would want. So, I mean, I don't know, is, it, is yours kind of similar? Well, it's exactly that. Um, I the there's a there's a good book I read called Drive, and it talks about what motivates us, mm -hmm. and it's not money. It's it's autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Yeah. You give people those three things, and they will be loyal employees. And and home inspections is perfect for that autonomy I let my inspectors set their own schedule they're off on their own nobody's looking over their shoulder mastery I give them the tools they need to be better home inspectors and purpose they're <laughs> they're, they're doing the Lord's work yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get those good referrals back I tell my guys I'm like are right, that good uh, not referral but uh, what do you call it you know the review or testimony yeah. 
I mean, I tell guys, I mean, this may sound corny, but that means more to me than money uh, because it makes me feel like what we're doing is right. Although yeah, intrinsically rewarding. Yeah. But I tell them, you know, I was like, you're never quite as good as your best, uh, your best fan, your best fan, but you're never as bad as your worst critic. Cause I'll get one of those fantastic, uh, uh, reviews and within 15 minutes uh, I will get somebody thinks we're like the worst person ever and, and <laughs> I don't know if it's God's way of not letting it go to your head or something <laughs> do, do you have those same similar 15 minutes <laughs> you know thankfully those negative reviews don't come through too often because I, mean, I remember just about every one and when oh, it does yeah. happen it's like it just it, it'll ruin my week man yeah yeah. Well, or maybe not a negative review, but a call. And, uh, you know, usually, most of the time, if the person's reasonable and logical, it never gets to that. You know, we, we somehow work something out, but not everybody's reasonable. Hi, I'm Preston Salen, and uh, I own Home Inspection Carolina, and I wanted to show you a way that you can uh, get more home inspection leads. So what you can do, um, you obviously can do a pre-inspection, but I understand some people don't want to do that. But what it is, we set out a sign. And this sign is going to have information about the house. Um, when you text that, you can have information about the house. You could have a home inspection discount. You could also lead them to a website. So this is my daughter, Sarah Margaret. Say hi. Hi. So Sarah Margaret, you pretend like you're buying this house. And I want you to text. You're riding by, doing a kiki dance, whatever. And you see, hey, I'm interested in this house. Um, I'd like you to text uh, info to to that number, okay? Okay. So go ahead and do that now. She's interested in the house. So for more information on this house, she's going to text that um, and a home inspection discount. Okay. So I just got the lead um, in the buyer. Now you should get something in a second. So what'd you get? So click on um, click on the there the, the top one there. Yeah. So. You'll see what she gets. So she's gonna get information about the house. And meanwhile, I got the lead. All right, so scroll up just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So there's like a little video about the house. Of course, your phone's really slow. Um, there's multiple pictures of the house um, and whatnot. And well, there goes the, the video finally. Um, I'm gonna have to edit this a little bit. But the the cool thing is, read read what uh, it says there. Read that out loud, Simar. This is a demo house. It is not for sale. It is for demonstration purposes only. Information about the house would go here if this house is actually for sale. If you are interested in getting a home inspection, call 704-542-6575 with the code. HIC 2018. You can receive a $23 discount on a home inspection on this house or any house you decide to buy in this area. Discount code HIC 2018. 704-542-6575. Okay. Now, um, while I talk a little bit, text that same number, text info one. You can just use the same number, text info one now. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how uh, we did a couple of other things with it. Um, but again, the whole thing is to drive leads. Now I have the lead and I can follow up with her. She's a potential buyer. Um, I can do a drip campaign. Um, let me go one. Now click on that. What you got for imp no, 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 top, top there. Edit this. See how there's a discount code there. Home inspection discount. All right. Last one. Go back to that same text and text, uh, info three. So this is something of value that's not a, a discount code. It's an uh, uh, inspection list. So I could put that sign anywhere. And again, see, I'm getting the, the lead. So I'll click on here to the lead. And you see, I just got these these leads. Uh, is your number 7047? Oh, well, I better not say that out loud because guys will be <laughs> calling you. But obviously, uh, all right, so did you do info three? Mm -hmm. All right, now click on that top one and make show what, what that shows on there. So, all three, I captured the lead. I did information about the house with a home inspection discount. I can connect it to a URL that has a, a home inspection discount, a URL with a something giveaway, uh, a checklist, radon information, you name it. 
but we capture the lead. So everybody who texts this, we get that home inspection lead. They're gonna need a home inspection. Uh, they're also gonna need probably a realtor. So the realtor is gonna like us as well. So check out inspectedhouses.com. It's a new way to get leads for your home inspection business and uh, leads for the realtor as well. Thank you. logical as we all know <laughs> no, no absolutely not well um uh, you gave some advice now i'm going to flip that on you what's the best advice you ever got Ruben? uh best advice was given by dominic marichek the owner of home inspector pro right. home inspection software right super smart guy yep. he gave this advice on the ashy forum back in maybe 2007, 2008, he was giving us a lot of advice on SEO and how to yeah, improve. He's, he's really good at that, yeah. Yeah, and he, he said one of the best things you could possibly do is start a blog. And um, let's see, yeah, it would have been 2007 I, I followed that advice and I started blogging then. And I started blogging in 2008, I guess. And that, that was, that's been the biggest game changer for my business more than anything else is awesome. blogging. All now, of the success that we've had is centered around blogging. Now is your blog, is it within your website or is it separate from your website and you connect to it or it is what, what well, type of format? Well, that's, that's some other advice I got. There's another home inspector. His name was Kurt Mittenbuehler. He said, quit blogging on this other realtor's website, do it on your own site. Yeah, and, so if you own the real estate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I do it on WordPress. It yeah, is on a nice site. Yep. And then I, I had another guy say, you ought to start bugging the local newspaper to blog on their website. These are good blogs. You should bug them. I know somebody. And it took me about a year or two of sending them emails, but I was persistent. And eventually I started blogging on, on the newspaper website as well. Star Tribune is the, is the site, startribune.com. And that that has helped as well. Awesome. So Wait, I do it in a few places. And I used your blog uh, about CSST just recently in our training. The, the oh, bond, bonding, um, yeah. because that was a big topic in our uh, CE. So we just had our meet, we meet every two weeks and we always do a little training. So uh, I hope it's all right. I pulled your uh, uh, CSST blog and uh, that we used that. because that was, that was That's what it's for. That was good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. But now, is that WordPress, is that your website too? Or is it a separate blog that you, separate website and you connect to it? Or is it all in the it's same all website? together. The whole website is hosted on WordPress. Okay. Cool. cool, cool. Yeah. And I, I love what WordPress for all the guys out there. I mean, some people know, you know, I can't even spell HTML. So, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I've learned a little bit of stuff, you know, obviously there's like a visual or, you know, what you see is what you get, but yeah. I think WordPress is pretty simple. I mean, it's, you know, there's so many videos on YouTube, you know, how do you do this in WordPress? How do you do that? And, you know, themes and stuff. And everything I read said WordPress is like most friendly or the, 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 the spiders or the algorithms or whatever like that the most. I don't know. And, and it's a, the, the community uh, contributes a lot to it, from what I understand. If I, yes. Tell me yeah. if I'm wrong or fill in any holes. No, I, no that's, I, I got nothing else to add. It, WordPress is great. Um, it's, it's not super simple. You're going to need, if you don't know how to do anything on a website, you're going to need somebody to hold your hand a little bit and kind of show you yeah. how to do this and that, plugins and all that jazz. But um, 
boy, it's a lot easier than coding HTML. Oh, God, yeah. And basically, I mean, with WordPress, a lot of things, you just kind of work your way down that left menu, you know, work yeah. your way down. And, you know, there's drop downs for each category. And, you know, if you add a theme, it'll get put in there. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, I can do it. I have to get a webmaster to make it and do it. But, you know, I can do the simple stuff. I can change stuff and add stuff, you know. That's <laughs> where I'm at, too. Yep. Major, major thing. Awesome. Well, um, Ruben, you know as well as I do that if you do enough inspections, we alluded to it a little bit, you're going to have an unhappy camper. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I inspect, I, I interviewed one guy one time. He said he never had a complaint. I'm like, what? I mean, people are, I don't care how good of an inspector you are. You're good. People are crazy, too. What do you do when you have an unhappy camper? Uh, do you have a process? What's that look like? Uh, yeah, I, I make sure that, uh, one of my guys, Bill gets that phone call. <laughs> I, don't, I don't deal with it. He was on vacation last year. You take it personally. Bill probably doesn't take it as personal as you do. <laughs> no, no, he definitely doesn't. Cause he would have quit already if he did. And, uh, I, don't, I take it personally. I take it as a personal affront. Oh, I do too. He was out of town last week, and uh, <laughs> when Chip's out of town, I can't. I can't. I'm like, God, Chip needs to come back because I can't. If I get one more of these, I'm gonna just. I'm ready to like go be an artist at the beach or something. I'm, yeah. I'm done. For, any, for anybody who who can't have a bill or a chip, yeah. uh, and by the way, we call Bill the Wolf. You remember yeah. Pulp Fiction? The Wolf comes, the cleaner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's so we call him the wolf. But uh, the, the biggest thing is to respond immediately. You yeah. get a call, even if you don't have the right answer, you get the voicemail. Don't wait till you get home and you look up the report. Give them a call back. Because they're getting mad. They're getting mad. Yeah. yeah. You need to respond immediately. Just say, look, I don't have all the answers. I haven't even looked at your report yet. I don't know what happened, but let me get home and I'll check it out and I'll get back to you. And then get back to them when you say you're going to. And be there in person, show up to the house, um, do a face to face. It is right. so different. I, I, I've only been to court once and we won and it was, it was garbage. But when I look back on that, my, my one regret is that I went back out to look at this guy's roof and, and, and it didn't work for him to meet me at the time. And I said, yeah, no big deal. I'll check it out. You know, I think I know what the problem is. And I, that was a mistake. I shouldn't Thank have. You actually, met him, it would have, it would have been different. Yeah, if I if I had done a face to face, I think I could have resolved the entire situation. Right. I'm with you. I've been to court a few times, and I've I've won each time, but knock on wood, it's not fun. Nobody really wins. I mean, the time, yeah, you go to court, you lose. Yeah, and and I will tell you right now, anybody listening. If, if you can ever, if, if you, you know, people always, what's your guidelines for paying for stuff or, 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 or refunding or whatnot? And I said, well, number one, if we're wrong, we're going to fix it. I mean, that's, that's a no brainer. But, right. you know, and in fact, I don't even have a problem writing that check. I mean, it hurts a little bit, but hey, we missed it. We should, you know, but I'm, hey, the ones I have a problem with are the ones like that that was in the report or something we couldn't have found. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, but, um, I always tell people, you know what? It's a cheap divorce. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, if you have to go to court, you're going to wish you would have refunded their money. And oh, my say, goodness, yes. Yeah, if there's a crazy factor, even if we're not, you know, I tell people, you know, we're not wrong at all, but this person is flipping crazy. We need to get out of any contract we have with them whatsoever. Yes. Because if – it's not this. It's going to be something else. They're going to find something else a week from now. So if we've got an opportunity to refund their money, get that signed release, we just need a divorce from this person. Because they're crazy. I mean, I hate to say it, but they're crazy. So Preston, if somebody called you up at the end of the inspection, like the day after the inspection, they don't even own the house yet. And they're like, you know, I just felt like the inspection wasn't all that great. Can I have my money back? Would you give them their money back? Hmm. So that what? Well, I would probe into it. Why do you feel like it was not that great? You know why? You know, but at the end of the day, probably yes, because I feel like this person's going to be problems down the road. You know, yes, I, that's <laughs> exactly it. You don't want them as a customer. Yeah, there's some you don't want, and and I, 
you know, my older inspectors have been around a while. They get it. They get it. In fact, I got some that'll be more, they'll refund it quicker than any, but you know, they're going to sign a release. I mean, that's part of the deal. <laughs> I mean, yep. I'm paying for a release basically. Um, yeah. Some of the newer guys, you know, like all of us were bright eyed, bushy tailed and wow, we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't. I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm just saying I've seen this movie before <laughs> and I know how it ends and it ain't good. <laughs> And, 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 and trust me, $400, $450 is a cheap divorce. <laughs> it is a that is nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, what's, Ruben, what's the tough, you, you and I think alike, um, what's the toughest time you've ever had in your business? And what'd you learn from it? You know, it was probably about six months to a year ago. I, I, I do a lot of CE classes for real estate agents. Okay. And I had been teaching under the license of a real estate attorney and he kind of got out of being a real estate attorney. He decided he wanted to open a, a speakeasy and, <laughs> wow, and he a, did. And it, <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he wanted to pursue his passion. So yeah. he did and he just kind of kept the, the teaching license and let me teach under him for right. many years. And it, it was just kind of riding a gravy train. It was nice. And eventually one day he screwed up some paperwork. He didn't get it renewed. And it was like, sorry, dude, you're out. I, I can't, I can't do anything for you. It was in February this year. And I had to cancel a bunch of classes that I had. Oh. And there were some other people whose classes I had already taught and I couldn't give them credit for the class. Eventually, I was, it was so embarrassing. It put me in such a lurch. And I realized I was too dependent on somebody else doing their job. And yeah. what I learned of that is I need to be more self-sufficient. And I, I have since gotten licensed to teach. It was a big pain in the butt, but I'm never going to have that happen again. Right, right. No, I, 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 th I think you're totally in it. And I, I, I tell my guys, I don't want to be too dependent on any one. If you're too dependent on anybody or anything, that's a weakness. <laughs> that's a weakness in your business. Yeah. Uh, and, and side note between you and me. So what would you do if ISN went away? Just a thought. All right, move on. <laughs> you know, because that was a, a possible threat, or at least I thought a while back. And there, there was some tough days. There, there was... There was you know, it's been a rocky year for, I mean, not business, but, you know, I was just cruising along. I had just had a, a meeting with my fi financial guy and, you know, it was like, you know, to get where you want your number, you know, you need 10 more years and you can cash out your, you know, everything, you know, business is cruising along or whatever. And then that happened. And I'm like, oh, crap. I might not get 10 more years. And then, you know, and I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but that whole thing about free inspections, which – you know, I've got more of a mindset now, but at the time I thought, wait a minute, are people going to start doing free inspections and the lead generator is going to start paying for it? They're going to put us all out of bit, you know, still a possibility, although a, probably a big uh, uh, ethical problem with that. But, you know, I'm sorry I got way off on a tangent, but I never had thoughts like what you just said until about a year ago. And you're right. We are too dependent. <laughs> same thing because there was a time there was ISS which was a Russ Collier system and I was on that and ISN came out well I was pretty good with ISS I'm pretty loyal I don't really change unless I'm having you know the, the, the pain of changing and uh, I was glad that there were two because I always thought yeah, that's great that there's two because if this one screws up I can switch to that one but now there's only one now, I know, uh, I think Nathan's sort of working on one. I mean, I, I, I hope there are two or three scheduling, just like there's several home inspection uh, uh, reporting software. That's great for us. Can you imagine if there was only one? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I might ruffle some feathers here, but I hope there are more than one scheduling. But I'll tell you, ISN has gotten so far ahead. I mean, it's fantastic what they can do, but gosh, yes, like we are very dependent on. I mean, that, that was a weakness, I, I will admit. I will admit. Yeah, I've told my wife that. That's bad because I don't know what we're doing. It's a testament to ISN. Yeah. They've done some amazing stuff, but it, gosh, yeah, if they disappeared, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'd probably go back to, 
we probably start out with a whiteboard. <laughs> you know, and, uh, there are some, because I, you know, it's funny, you ask, well, I don't know if funny is the right word, but you asked that. I thought that those thoughts, and I had actually done some research, and I'm like, well, there are a lot of generic scheduling softwares out there, like for, you know, any industry. And yeah. I thought, we had to, we could go to that, and then we could get, you know, some uh, CRM separately to do some of the emails and stuff. And, and we could probably get by and function, but obviously it'd be a huge setback and a huge pain in the butt, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> I mean, if, 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 if Armageddon happened, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did realize the same weakness that you probably realize. <laughs> yep. uh, so this is a good question for you, Ruben, because I know the answer. You do do social media. Um, yeah. What, for social media, what tips do you have for other inspectors that might be listening? The, the biggest argument that I have from people or the biggest excuse for why they don't do it is I don't have time for that. And um, to that I say, no, it's just not a priority for you. I've got a saying up on my wall. It says, I have time for everything that's important. Yeah. It's, you, you, you do. It's, you only have priorities. And if you say you don't have time for something, it means it's not important to you. Social media is extremely important to me. It's a big part of our marketing. It's a big part of my business. I get a lot from it. And so I've decided to make it a priority. Right. I don't have to dedicate a ton of time to it. We've got a Facebook page. We've got a ton of people on there. We get a ton of interaction. And I probably spend about 60 seconds on it every day. It's not a whole lot more than that. I do one, I do a photo of the day. Um, if, if you want ideas for what to do on social media, read some books on it. Gary yeah. Vaynerchuk has got yeah. a lot of fantastic. It and that, that couple of others, yeah. Yeah, read, read a few of Gary Vaynerchuk's books or listen to some of his podcasts. He's got fantastic advice. Jay Bear. Uh, read his book called Utility. It's spelled Y-O-U, Utility. Great book on social media and what people want. And it, it's just, I, I see so many Facebook pages where it's like, oh, hire our company. We got a, you know, we got a promotion going on. We do great job. It's like, shut up. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. And people it's, are going to unlike your company and never come back again. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I heard uh, this guy, Perry Mayhew, or was it? Perry, something. Anyway, he's a big uh, social media guy. He he had the best analogy. He said it's like a big cocktail party. Yeah. And if you go to a party, think about the people at the party that are fantastic. They go in, hey, how's it going? How's that baby doing? You know, hey, how's the Giants doing? You know, and you got a couple of jokes. Imagine whatever. You're just an interesting person. You're fun to be around. You compliment people without being too, you know, you know, don't want to make be weird or anything but um and you rarely even talk about yourself um and, and so, but you know when you go back you know everybody has cigars or something like that i mean everybody in some way or another you let them know you're a home inspector but yeah. it's 80 percent social you know that pareto principle 20 percent business but on the flip side of that if you came to that party and you were the guy like uh, hey um you know, uh, I don't think you've had this house treated for termites. You know, I can help you out with that. Um, hey, you know, uh, I'd like to look over your life insurance policy. I think I could save you some money. And, um, Ooh, yeah. I mean, you know, my white sales Tupperware. I think we could find – like, who the hell invited that person? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's the way you're behaving if you're constantly putting your, you know, hire me, hire me. I think a picture of the day is great or uh, – funny picture because people love that and it's a sign yeah. that they realize you're a home inspector. Everybody knows yeah. you're a home inspector. But yep. if you can exactly. be fun, entertaining, educational, try not to be boring, you know, I, and, and for God's sake, don't put anything cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and be consistent about it. I mean, just tell yourself, I'm going to do this every day. Yep. So consistency is really important too. You know what I do, uh, Ruben, is like on the weekend, if I've got time on a Sunday afternoon, I'll just go looking for a bunch of stuff, right? That's interesting, yeah. fun, like on Pinterest or something. My wife sends me a bunch of stuff that's just funny. And then what I do is I make a little folder for the week. 
So I put a bunch of stuff and just save it in that folder. So I got a bunch of stuff ready for the week or quotes. I even one time, I like went and bought some quote books and I'm just looking through it, you know, and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and I'm friends with a lot of people who post really good stuff. And I always ask them, like, there's great home inspectors out there. Like, uh, Joe, uh, you know, that was really good. A couple of others, but I always ask, can I repost this? And because, you know, my realtor audience isn't his realtor audience and they love it. You know, a lot yeah. of times you know, people ask me if they can repost my stuff and you're, I, I, you know, the answer is yes, either way. I can't stop you. But to me, it's like a, a compliment, you know, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, I, please do. <laughs> yeah. Just, just don't be controversial. That, that's my thing. Too. Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, um, how do you, Ruben, and I'm sorry, I know we're getting out and your time is valuable. I'll, I'll try, you've been dropping some really good stuff. How do you handle price shoppers that call structure tech? How much do you charge? That's the first question. And then yeah. it's obvious they're calling a bunch of people. How do you handle that? Um, I start off by telling them, well, I, 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 if you're asking about price, I'm guessing you're probably shopping around and I'm surely going to be the most expensive company you call. I'm going to warn you that before I give you the price. Your video said that. I was like, wow. But yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. I mean, you explained why. And I, I haven't had that video online for long, and I haven't had pricing on the website for long because I, I wanted to get that message across to people. And finally, I said, no, we're just going to make a video that starts out that way. you got to see this video if you're going to see the pricing. You don't have to, but that's the idea. Well, and, uh, it makes me want to know why. Why are you the most expensive? You know what I mean? <laughs> that is exactly it. And if yeah. people just don't care, they won't yeah. ask. We'll give them yeah. the price and they're gone and it won't waste our time. But okay. if they do care, and gosh, I'll tell you, at least 90% of people, at least 90% are very curious when I lead with that. Yeah. And I said, I was. Why are you the most expensive? Why are you admitting this? <laughs> said, well, and, and then I'll, you know, I'll get some USPs. We'll say our, our, our main selling points here, you know, we're the most highly rated here and there and all that other jazz. Then I can explain it to them and they genuinely want to know. And I found we have a pretty high close rate with that. Well, you know, I, I tell, I tell my kids, you know, it's like, too, it's like, do you want to be the Corvette or the Pinto? And, and here's the thing. There are no Pintos, uh, 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 car associations. There are no groups that meet <laughs> on the yeah. weekends. For Nobody's proud of that. And I own a Chevette, you know, but there are groups that meet that for uh, Corvettes or Mustangs or higher end, you know, you know, Teslas. There, you know, there's a reason it costs more, but it's because of the value. And I yeah. always tell guys, you know, on these forums and stuff, and never lower your price. Always raise your value. I, I, I mean, if you really look at the value, you're the best value. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can get a cheaper price, but if you add up the value, divide it by what and all you're getting, you'll actually figure out I'm the best deal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that may be a little bit arrogant to put it in those exact terms, but I mean, if you're going to buy something, Ruben, are you always looking for the cheapest or are you looking for, let me ask you this. This is the question I always ask. If you had to get your eyes operated on, if you went to the doctor, you know, you're having a little trouble, you go to like, uh, Ruben, you got to have a surgery, man. You got cataracts or something going on here. Your eyes, your eyesight. Yeah. All right. So do you want the best eye surgeon you could possibly get or do you want the cheapest? Yeah, that's easy. I think everybody has the same answer. I mean, you don't, you don't mess with that. Yeah. Well, is your largest investment the place where you raise your kids that much different than your eyes? I mean, it's, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, is that what your staff tells people when you get asked that question? I need to, I need to train them up on that. <laughs> That's what okay. I always say when uh, I think, but I mean, you know, I, I, I do, you know, if they lead with price, I always tell them, don't just spit that, out. you know, d explain all the stuff we have. And, you know, and as you're price shopping, you know, just, you know, a couple things. Make sure they have this, this, and this. So that is important. A lot well, of times, let me, let me dig into that, though, Preston. I mean, do you have do, – do your sales people have scripts that they follow? Do you have answers laid out for them? I do. I do. But here's my problem. I have a call center after hours. That's where, uh, you know, they have some turnover. 
Now, my girls, there, there's three. When they answer it, they do have screens. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have a call center for rollover and after hours. They get the strips and whatnot, but you know they have turnover and they they answer for multiple home inspectors. I think it's better than getting a. I call it my first string, my second string. <laughs> my second string is not nearly as good as my first string, but it's better than a, you know, a, 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 I'm sorry, a, a recording or a, a bot or something like that. How about you? What, what's your answer? To what, that? Would you like to share who you use on the air, or would you like to tell me later? I, you know, I'll share. Um, I, I use RWS call center from way back. Um, I hear good things about Zach, uh, Paul Zach's. Um, but at the time, say that again. What was the name of it? Uh, the one I'm using or Zach's. What, what are you using? I'm using R, RWS. RW. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, and you know, Paul Zach's is American call center. I've heard great things about him. Um, I mean, you know, no call center is going to be as good as your, your, your people, but you um, know, the problem I had with that is they wouldn't do uh, part time. You know what I mean? They wanted to be all or not. At the time, I talked to them. They may have changed. And I interviewed a lady. Oh gosh, I can't hear it. Uh, it's on. It's on here. She's really good. She was really impressive. So if I ever had a change, I think I would go to her. I'm having a brain fart right now. I'm sure, I can find it on your site. Yeah, it's, I actually interviewed her. Uh, she was at. She was at um, uh, uh, inspection room. Uh, okay. Okay. Her name. I can see her picture. Russo. Is it Russo? Something like that. You know, she answered a lot of tough questions, and I was pretty impressed with her. So anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to be too. It was. It was probably two years ago. We tried setting up another service just to take rollover calls. So if we couldn't answer a call in five sure. rings or whatever, it was going to go over to this other service. And it took us a solid month to get that set up. We had to make a lot of changes in ISN. Had to get them a lot of information. Changes with the phone company. I mean. There was so much involved in this changeover, and I listened in on those phone calls, um, the, the recordings of the phone calls, and I listened to about the first, like, five to ten, and we had the entire service canceled, cut it within, like, an hour. Was it just like, <laughs> they were just, like, order takers, sort of? Is that what, you know, just... They were order takers, they had a script, and they would cram it down my customer's throat, like... Stock chart tech is the most highly rated, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, you. it sounded like somebody who was getting paid $5 an hour reading a script and they didn't even sound literate. It was so atrocious. Right. So I, I've, I had that bad experience. I, it's not like every company would be bad, but another home inspector had told me they were great. <laughs> so so my, my, uh, my spidey senses tingle. Yeah, well... I will say this to anybody listening, no call center is as good as your people. <laughs> They'll never be. Um, we just wanted like after hours, you know, because, and, and maybe I'm wrong about this. I felt like a live person was better than it going to uh, an answer machine. Although I have seen some that are so bad that an answer machine might be better. <laughs> um, but the good thing is, I mean, a lot of your regular customers, We've actually converted a lot of people to just scheduling online and scheduling with the ISN app. That's another big worry. If ISN went out, it's like, God, all these people scheduling on that app. Um, and it's a lot like, you know, that self checkout at the grocery store. When they yeah. first put that thing in there, I hated it. I was like, are you kidding me? I got to do this and I got to do it. But now, after I learned to use it, I prefer it. <laughs> I, I like to just go in there, get in and out. I'm not talking to anybody and, you know, I always tell people I'm actually an introvert leading an extrovert life. <laughs> but I think that's the same for some people. Some people, you know, are going to be old school. They're going to call. That's what they want to do. Some people are going to schedule online. You know, some people like an app. I just, however you want to order it, I want to make it easy for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, somebody gave me some good advice one time. Says make make it easy for them to order for you, and make it easy for them to pay. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I have some rental houses, and I send them 12 envelopes with 12 stamps on them already. <laughs> All you got to do is put a check in there drop it in the mail. <laughs> Make it easy, easy for them to pay. Well, a uh, couple more questions, Ruben. I'll let you go. I know you got work to do. Um, I know you don't have a crystal ball. None of us can predict the future. What, how do you think, though, inspections will change in the future? 
I won't hold you to it, but what, you've obviously got some thoughts. On I think there's going to be more multi-inspector companies. I, I think things are just going that direction. I think people are going to be taking more videos. There's going to be more software that lets you put videos in your inspection reports. We're going to see more of that. And I think there's going to be a lot more data collection, uh, big data, like aggregate data, like how you're going to be able to pull reports and figure out how many houses in this zip code have roofs with this. I, I would love to have some type of way of figuring that out with my inspection software just so i can punch something up i mean we have that with sports now where you hear a million statistics on well if this batter's coming up and he's facing a left-handed pitcher in the eighth inning and you know what about okay if it's going to be in this zip code and it's this age of house what's the percentage that we're going to have this problem i think right. we're going to start seeing more statistics but the home inspection software needs to catch up with that but i mean 10 years from now i, I think we're going to be there I totally agree with you, and I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I just I, I'm with you. I, I, I think I think that's where it's going. Uh, Ruben, I know the answer before I ask this. Have you ever been thrown under the bus by a contractor? Have you ever got that call? Uh, my contractor said you guys should have found this. Um, I don't know if we can ever prevent that. I guess my question is. How do you deal with it? Do you have any ideas of how we can contain it, I guess, or circumvent it a little bit? I, I don't have any great ideas. Um, <laughs> it's just the crazy stuff. I, no, I, I'm sorry. I've got nothing. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that, and I've already asked people that on every one of your podcasts, and I always just think, I, I've got nothing, man. It's the problem gonna... is, too, a lot of people believe the last person in. You know what I mean? It's like oh, the last... totally. You know, and, and it's like you don't even have a, a set. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, if I took the heating and cooling system apart <laughs> or I took that wall out, I could see what he sees. But there's no way I could have seen that or tore that wall up when somebody else owned it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, I shouldn't say any names, but there's a TV show that doesn't do us any favors, um, which I found out is actually a remodeling show. But they, they get these ideas, I think, in people's head that, you know, they rip apart a wall. Oh, my God, how did he miss that leaky faucet? I'm like, because there was a wall there? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I have no idea what show you're talking about, but I will tell you, I wrote a blog post a few years ago um, titled uh, Homes on Homes, Any Reality? <laughs> and uh, I, it, I, I gave my opinion on, on that particular show. It's on my website. I, okay. I Say anything that's not 100% accurate. So I give my two cents on that. I mean, I do like the fact that it brings more attention to our profession, but it, you know, yeah, I, I don't, I don't like some of the. You know, here's what I've learned about blogging. I blog, and you know, my kids have got me in blogging. Well, they're like, "What, well, Daddy? You got to have drama," and I'm like. I don't want to have drama in my real life. <laughs> and I think for good TV, you need drama. That's all I'm going to say. So I'll leave it there. Because uh, I think drama equals ratings. So anyway, uh, question about this. This is a tough one. It got better, but then it seems like it's gotten worse. Forums. How do we keep it professional in the forums? You know, we're in a position where we're – supposed to be an unbiased third party in my mind kind of like judges and i'm not saying all judges are great but you know how judges when they run for office they are not allowed to throw mud at other because it makes them all you know there's rules <laughs> people run for president or governor or you know they can say whatever that you know he hates baby seals and all that but judges can't because it you know i always try to think like that with home inspectors we're supposed to be this impartial you know, I wish we didn't throw mud at each other. I don't know if we could say, you know, what's your thoughts on that? How, you know, how do we keep it professional or can we? Uh, the best advice I would have if somebody were going to start a forum and keep it professional is let people know that when you contradict others, they're going to take it as an insult. You need to do it carefully. Um, I, if I were going to start a forum, I might even make it a requirement that everybody has to read How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale read Carnegie. the book first. Is it Dale Carnegie or Napoleon Hill? One of those. <laughs> Dale Carnegie. Napoleon Hill was uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, there you go. That's the big one that you're thinking of. You've yeah. probably read 
bunch. That's the one I know. But uh, Dale Carnegie, or even better yet, How to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age. Newer yeah. version of that. Read that a couple of times, and you will be a great participant in online forums, and you'll see people write these stupid things where you go, all you're going to do is make this person mad. I mean, yeah. there's a nice way to say just about everything, but uh, people don't get it. And I know there's a lot of very nice people who don't come across that way online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've met some people. And I'm like, when I actually met them, I was like, you always thought you were a jerk, but you're okay in person. Why, why do you seem like a jerk online? <laughs> you know even, even myself, I feel like 10 years ago, um, I, I used to be, I, I used to feel that the truth was the most important thing. And when I saw somebody yeah. bitten BS, I would call them out on it because I, I didn't want that message getting brought out to a bunch of other inspectors who don't know better. And yeah. a lot of people have that idea and they, they feel like they're doing the right thing by correcting people with incorrect information. But really, I, you, you got to realize it's going to be a personality conflict and it's you're going to make person. somebody mad and they're going to hate you. Yeah. Well, you know, and I tell my realtors, I was like, you know, if you're out in inspection and there's a realtor there, never make that realtor look bad, even if they're wrong. And I give a perfect example of, you know, and this actually happened, you know, I'm inspecting a house and there's, um, there's, uh, it looks like a, a, a fogged windows, um, you know, over here, but it really wasn't. It was, um, uh, I think it was either the sprinkler was hitting it or it was just condensation on the outside or something. And she blatantly said, you know, oh, those windows are fogged. You know, God put that on the report. And it's like, all right, she just said something that I know is wrong <laughs> because I'm <laughs> out there. Now, how do I handle this? You know, it, right in front of the client. And I said, here was the best way I thought. I said, you know what? I thought it was too. Man, it looks just like it. But you know what? Um, and I went out there and I could write my name on the outside of it. I, I, I think what happened is it's just condensation on the outside. But boy, it does look like it. So you see, you gave them a way out without, but you know, if you just like, you know, no, you're wrong. You just made that realtor look bad in front of their client. They're never going to call you again. <laughs> you need to let everybody involved in a conversation save face. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I know we're getting off on tangents. I say the same thing to Chip when he's uh, negotiating a repair or a problem. All right, so you get a call back, you know, something's happening here. And, and, and I hope I don't offend anybody when I say this, but, you know, let's say it's a couple, man and a woman, and there's usually one of the two, and it's not always the man, it's not always the woman. One's going to be a little bit more logical, and I know you guys are probably going to think that I'm – not always – it can sometimes be one's going to be a little bit more emotional or you know, mm -hmm. they're in the ear of that other one. You need to get our this paid for, blah, 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 blah. So just what you just said, you've got to give them a way to say things. <laughs> I can sense sometimes that this one of the two is like more logical and willing to think, but they can't go back empty handed to this person because they're just going to give them hell. And, they got to sleep with them. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say So I'm like, I say, you know, so what I usually do is say, you know, I know y'all think the guy missed this and blah, 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 blah. And there's no way he could have seen that. You know, I think it's unfair uh, to do it. But here's what I am willing to do. I empathize with your situation. I'm willing to refund the money of the inspection. You do not have to answer right now. I'll let you think about it over the weekend. Just let me know Monday. But that... But see, you gave him something. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, seven times out of eight, they'll come back and they'll take it. You know what I mean? But if you just like, absolutely, no, I'm not paying for that. There's no way my guy could have seen that, blah, 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 and you're wrong. Well, now you put this guy in a situation, even the more logical, or the woman, one who would have been, um, they're in an impossible situation. You've got to give them a way to say fine. Don't ever back anybody into a corner. Right. It's never going to turn out well. Exactly. You know, I, I give you, Ruben, you're probably like, Preston, shut up. You talk too much. Mm -hmm. I tell people, in history, do you know why the White House has an Oval Office? Why? That, that was actually George Washington, although he didn't live in the White House. He had, he did with the plans, you know, uh, I, he, he was the only president that didn't live because it wasn't built yet. That was his, 
he came up with that, the Oval Office, and there's like a door on that Oval Office, so that even back then, reporters would try to pin him down. He had a way to get around and escape. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people, and my inspectors, give everybody a back door, including yourself. Uh, yeah. you know, even when you go out there and say something, there's almost no absolutes in this world, except for math, you know, because even like code, you start quoting code, if you're wrong, Oh, and you know, there's code, but then there's manufacturer's instructions that overrides code. Just when you explain something, you know, just say, give yourself a back door. You know, as far as I know, this is incorrect. There could be some code I don't know about or, or uh, manufacturer's instructions that may override. I'm, I'm not, and I will research that and get it to you. You know what I'm saying? But don't, oh, yeah. you're so absolute about something and then you're wrong. Oh, my. God. Yes, uh, you had similar experiences. Oh, completely. I think I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Ben Franklin was well known for doing that. I mean, even somebody like him, right? He became less and less sure of his answers as he got older in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? When I was this age, I knew everything, but as I got older, I realized how much I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, cut just a couple more questions. I'll let you go here, Ruben. I appreciate everything you're uh, you're contributing here. It's, I've, I've got. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this because I got some gold nuggets from you myself. Uh, what? And this is a G-rated show. You probably know this question. What's yeah. the wildest, weirdest, or craziest thing you or or any one of your guys have ever found? Out? You know, one of the craziest I ever saw was I was I was looking in this crawl space. So we don't have a lot of crawl spaces in Minnesota. When we do, it's like a little portion off a off of a basement where they added on to a home. So right. it's, it's got a basement, and then at the edge of the basement, there's a little crawl space. And I'm looking in there, and, and it it looks like a wheel, and it's buried in concrete. And I'm going, what? Or it looks like a tire sticking halfway out of concrete i'm like how is that happening what am i looking at here and i keep staring and then i realize i see these big springs and i realize they're trailer springs and i keep staring and i realize they built this whole addition on top of a trailer oh this is just a trailer you put behind a truck they built the addition on top of it they embedded it in concrete and I have that picture on my website, man. You can see the wheels sticking out of the concrete and everything. That can't be the code. That cannot be the code. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not. I stared at that thing for a long time, and in the end, I, you know, I told the buyer, I don't think this is going anywhere. If I were buying this house, there's really nothing I'd be doing with this because there was so much support that they added around it. I just said this is this is not conventional. That's all I got for you. Wow, that's pretty good, man. That one's up there. That one's up there. You know what? I early on when I first started inspecting, this was back before we had video cameras and and all this stuff. I it was like five trailers combined. <laughs> it was like five different trailers that had connected. I wish to gosh I could inspect that today with like all the video equipment and all the stuff that we have today. I just, I remember it in my mind, but I just don't have, I wish I would have documented it because it was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> Pretty cool to say the least. Um, what's your best low cost, no cost marketing idea? Uh, it's social media for sure. Blogging, YouTube, Facebook, uh, teaching CE classes. No, none of these cost you any money. And that's, that's really all I do. So they're all low cost, no cost, assuming my time is worthless. <laughs> well, that's, that's the part. And I enjoy it. I actually enjoy it. It's just don't get down a rabbit hole. <laughs> that's what I tell people. Like, you know, go in there and do what you, you just need to post every day. You know, a couple times a day, something interesting. Do that and get out. Don't be on there doing Candy Crush or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that yeah. stuff. Just, just post some interesting stuff and get out. Uh, yeah. This question, you've kind of already answered it, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. Maybe, maybe you've got some more. Ruben, if you had to move to a brand new area equal uh, to the size of the market that you're in now, um, you had to start all over. You know, all your stuff, training, vehicles, all that, you just – don't know anybody, so you've got a market. So basically, it's an ROI on market. If yep. you had five thousand dollars to market in an area, or you were moving into an area, 
where you didn't know anybody, what would you do with that $5,000? I would spend a good chunk of that on building a good website and, you know, do all the stuff that I talked about with, uh, with social media that's all free. And I would figure out how to get licensed to teach CE classes to real estate agents. Good advice. Good advice. And I did it um, early on. I need to get re, uh, it was like an elective. And then the, the second best thing, that's the best. That's the best. The second best thing is to hook up with somebody who does teach it. That's really like popular. There's probably going to be one that's a little more popular than others and see if you can't sponsor some of their classes and get in the talk. But, but doing it yourself is, is the best. Yeah. Um, Ruben, we're, just the last couple of questions. Um, is, uh, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, I'd say what, what books should home inspectors read? What's good marketing stuff for single man and multi? Awesome. And, uh, All right. What books you, used to, you used to ask everybody that it looks like you, you, you took that off your list. Well, I, I, I put new questions because some people are like, man, it's getting stale. So I tried to move it around, but that's, that's a good question. What, what books? Let's bring you that read? question back. And <laughs> you know, if you would, Preston, would you put a list together of what everybody has said? Oh, oh my gosh, good. that would be so awesome because I just start powering through that, that list. Because if it's each one is somebody's favorite book, oh, man. You got, some, be some. Yeah. got some amazing stuff there. I don't know. I, I've heard E-Myth mentioned on your podcast so many times. I mean, that is just such a staple for any business owner. You need to read E-Myth. Yeah. I, I already mentioned Drive. Great yeah. book to read if you're going to have employees talking about how to motivate them. Uh, I've heard people talk about the one thing. I mean, I've realized my one thing is blogging. That, that happens, man. I, I, I focus on that. Another great one I just read is called Getting Things Done. And oh, it's yeah. just making sure that you are focused in everything you're doing. I mean, what am I doing at the computer right now at, at noon? Am I, am I reading emails? No, keep your emails closed. Focus on whatever the task at hand is. Turn off all your notifications. Get stuff done. Right. Uh, great book, Getting Things Done. Hug your haters. Uh, if you're oh, going to. Wow. Home inspection company, you need to read that. Okay, and it's that's another one by Jay Bear. And if, if you're going to respond to any negative online reviews, read this first. If you're going to deal with any customer complaints, read this first. Very good book, Hug Your Haters. And then uh, maybe the biggest life changing book I've ever read ever read is uh, The Miracle Morning. Yeah, Hal Elrod, right? Yeah, yeah. I know you're familiar with that one. And I've read just about all the other books in that series of Miracle Morning books. That's been fantastic. Yeah, I just listened to a podcast he was on. Can't remember. And it was a, uh, it reminded me of how, you know, I hadn't done much with Hal Elrod in a while, but uh, it, it was pretty good. And, and, you know, he even said, you know, the Miracle Morning, you know, I mean, the, the premise behind that was you could set yourself up for a good day. Um, it, it, he even said, though, if you have a routine, some people aren't morning people, although you can make it tough. But if you have a certain routine every day, um, it doesn't have to be in the morning, you know, a lot of times. Uh, but it, it sets you up for success because you have these certain things you do every day that are going to happen no matter what. Like your blog, maybe you do some type of exercise, you know, get oh, the blood flowing, get the, you know, uh, endorphins or whatever uh, uh dopamines going that sort of thing well awesome awesome well ruben uh last question i think and then we got to get got to get some love for you uh get some people to give you some likes and, and, and subscribe to your channel and, and you know i'm not just saying that just for, for your benefit which uh it will benefit uh you know if you get more likes seo but i'm telling you this guy's youtube channel you need to go check it out and, and, and watch it. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And I use it for training for, for my guys. So I'm telling you for your own benefit, go subscribe to his, uh, his YouTube. Uh, uh, and what is that while we're talking about? What's your YouTube channel? It's Structure Tech, I think. In, uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's Inspector Ruben. Okay. But, you know, if you, if you, just, if you go to YouTube and you just search for Structure Tech, you'll get it. You'll find it there. 
And Ruben is R E U E B B E N. But I'll tell you, if you if you go to Google, you just type in Home Inspector Ruben, and you can spell Ruben any way you want. Yeah, I'll, pick, I'll figure it out. <laughs> it's the first thing that comes up, I guarantee. Awesome. Uh, is there any question you want to ask me, Ruben? Uh, what are your favorite books? Oh, <laughs> I was thinking about it while you said that. Um, there's one, uh, Atkins, uh, The Sales Machine, um, Ultimate Sales Machine. Love that one. Um, and of course I love, you know, uh, the E-Myth Gerber, that, that's a staple. Um, I'm going to go a little unconventional here. Um, and I know it sounds like the cheesiest title in the world, but it's, uh, the, uh, Fastlane Millionaire, uh, MJ DeMarco. Okay. Um, and he also wrote one called Unscripted. Um, really good books. I, I, you know, I listened to a lot of podcasts and somebody had recommended it and, you know, I, I was due for a new book. And I was like, all right, I'll give that one a shot. And, and I listened to Audible. I don't know if you guys, I love Audible because uh, oh, yeah. we're driving all the time. So I can't read, but I can listen. So I listen to books a lot. And, um, but yeah, I think those two, um, God, there's so many good books. Um, oh, uh, there's another one. What would Google do? Um, kind of gives you some ideas. Um, Gosh, there's just so many. Um, I was trying to think. Uh, I was just talking to somebody the other day. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Amazon. I, I, I love and I hate Amazon. Let, let me uh, let me let me let me explain. <laughs> I don't like Amazon because I feel like they're eating up local businesses. But uh, being a capitalist and being a you know a, you know I can't. I can't you know, they just build a better mousetrap. I mean, you know, it's just yeah. what we're all trying to do. One thing that they do, and I said this in a, in a post that I read a lot, um, you know, Jeff Bezos, if you, but whatever. One thing that Amazon does very, very well is they look at everything from their sh customer perspective. How can we make this uh, experience easier, better, faster, quicker for the client. <laughs> and if I had any uh, advice to give to a home inspector, think like Amazon. You know, we, we get so caught up in, I've got this and I got that and I got this thing and I'm the best home inspector. I'm like, what's your client experience? You know, do you make it easy for them? Do you, oh, you know what I mean? That's why Amazon, I mean, you know, I, I gave this example, you know, Sears makes great tools. Um, and, and, and I don't like what Amazon's doing to local business, but guess what? I just ordered some tools because they'll be on my doorstep in two days and I didn't have to leave my house. Yeah. So, I don't know. Sorry, I got off on a tangent. I don't like what they're doing to local business, but at the same time, I'm a capitalist and they've just built a better mousetrap. I'm just hoping local businesses can figure out how to, you know, they, they still have some advantages. Uh, so, you know, just figure out how to always be thinking about things through your customer's eyes. And, uh, you know, improving their experience. Sure. Well, awesome, Ruben. Uh, it's been, you've shared a lot of gold nuggets. We appreciate it. We got to get you some love back. So uh, again, the YouTube page, I think, Inspector Ruben, or if you could halfway spell Ruben, Google yeah. it out. <laughs> Old Inspector Ruben, any of that, find me there. And what's the, um, the uh, Facebook? Uh, let's go to his Facebook. If you got value out of listening to this, do Ruben a solid and go to his Facebook and like it because um, he's spent, you know, an hour and a half giving a lot of gold nuggets. He's not getting paid for this. Let's give him a little bit of love by giving him some likes. You know what? I'll tell you, if you're, if you're a home inspector, um, I, I write about, gosh, it feels like about half of my blog posts, the intended audience is home inspectors. I don't know why. It's kind of stupid. It should be the consumer, but I write a lot for home inspectors. And if you'd want to subscribe to my blog, um, that is what, I put my heart and soul into. That's what I put my time into. How do you subscribe to that? Tell, tell us how to do it. Type in, uh, type in home inspection blog, Google that, and it should be the first thing that comes up, or type in Ruben's home inspection blog, so, something. Whatever you put in, you will find the blog on Google, and there's a subscribe button right on the blog. Put okay. your email address in there. Awesome, awesome. Does it like send out an email too when you do a new one, possibly, or not, or do we just check that? I copied you, Preston, when you, when you were sending out these emails for your podcast notifications, whatever <laughs> format you're using for that, 
I started using for my blogs because I wasn't happy with my old format. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I, it looks exactly the same as yours does. Well, cool. Well, cool. Well, and, and I'm telling you guys out there, if you start hiring people and you need some training material, his blog is fantastic for that. I Thank mean, you. it's ready made. <laughs> Since I hope that's okay. I probably owe you some royalty at times. <laughs> Please use it. At, at the meeting, I was like, this is a guy I know, Ruben, man. The guy's very organized. He's got a great company. He's got he put out these great videos, but it's great content for, for teaching. Well, awesome. well, Ruben, I won't hold you back from your family. Uh, I appreciate your time. I know all the listeners do. I will get this together and uh, get it up and online uh, by tomorrow. Promise. Cool. I'm looking right. forward to it. Thanks, Thank bro. you, sir. Good I time. Thank you. You bet.